Hi, I'm John, and in this video, I'm going to take a look at the powerful master field actor that Epic has created for us to easily create chaos destruction and chaos interactions in your games uh, in Unreal Engine 5. And so I'm going to look at all of the different ways that we can adjust the behavior of this uh, master physics field and how to create uh, specifically this damage over time or accumulated damage effect. Uh, using uh, these flames, for example. Okay, so I've got a new first-person template project open, and the first thing that I'm going to do here is just grab this cube in the corner. I'm going to go to Fracture Mode here and make a new geometry collection, and I'll select the Uniform Fracture tool, and I'll click Fracture here three times. So I'm going to make uh, three different levels of fractures. And go back to select mode. I'm going to find under the details here, uh, show bone colors, and set that to false. Okay, and what I want to do here is I want to explore the master field actor that Epic has created for us to create chaos destruction and chaos uh, interactions. Um, so to find that, I'm going to go to my content browser, and under settings, I'll select show engine content. Uh, and in the engine folder here, I'm going to search for master field. And I don't want to modify this file directly. I'm going to duplicate this and make my own copy. And I'll drag my copy into my content folder. And then I'm going to turn off show engine content. And uh, back in my content folder, I'm going to rename this to uh, B underscore my damage field. Uh, and you can make as many instances or as many copies of this as you need uh, to have different sorts of effects and interactions in your game. Um, okay, and I'll open this up here to take a look. We'll take a look under the hood briefly, and I'm not going to look at every uh, node individually here. I'm just going to sort of go over this in uh, overview detail. Um, so in the beginning here, we're just setting up some variables, and then um, up here we've got the activation logic. So this is basically taking care of whether this is activated manually or it's after a, on a delay or uh, whether it's on tick. And uh, then we're doing our actual activation and breaking, uh, which is going to apply external strain or uh, internal strain uh, or decay damage over time. And we'll get into all of that in a couple minutes here. Um, after that, we're applying uh, forces and angular momentum. So uh, the field can apply radial force, uh, directional force, uh, angular momentum. And uh, after that, we're doing uh, cleanup and lifespan logic. So uh, quite a bit of work done here under the hood for us uh, that you don't have to do um, to create your basic chaos uh, destruction interactions. Uh, there's also all these functions here that make up some of these nodes, like this fall off and culling switch. Um, initialize field variables, all kinds of stuff here. And take a look at this list of variables here as well. Um, and that's in addition to all of these field settings, all these exposed uh, variables here, instance exposed variables that we can adjust uh, to change the behavior of the actor. Uh, and so let's drag one of these out here. I'm just going to close that and drag this out into the playing area here. All right, and the first thing I'll do is take a look at some of the uh, default values here in the details. So some of the exposed variables we have here is uh, field active. That's set to true by default. Uh, debug set to false. So we can turn that on, and that turns on this uh, extra information, uh, as well as showing the actor at runtime here. So for example, if I turn this off, and uh, let's just turn our player start uh, to be facing into the corner here. And I'll press play. Uh, and of course, we can't see our physics field actor because there's nothing to see. It's not a visible actor. Um, this blue sphere here is just basically for you, uh, visualization in the editor. Uh, and the uh, red arrows there is indicating that there's a radial force being applied here. Um, but I can grab this and turn on debug. And now if I press play, we can see this actually at runtime in the game. And so that can be helpful while you're setting up your, uh, your effects in your game, uh, or if you're creating these fields from uh, projectiles or something like that. Uh, so activation type here, the default is set to delay. And you can also set this to on tick, or on tick after a delay, or to be manually triggered. Uh, the fall off shape here by default is a sphere. You can also make it a box uh, or a plane as well, depending what you need. And the delay amount by default is set to one second. 
Um, and so by default also we're set up to use external strain. That's set to true and the strain magnitude is set to this large number. So it's basically going to break apart anything that it's overlapping. So let's just overlap our uh, mesh here and take a look at that. It's set to uh, activate after a delay of one second and uh, use an external strain of this really large number. So I'll press play here and that's the effect. Okay, and so uh, we can also, scrolling down here, we can see that we're also set to use a radio vector by default, set to true, and the magnitude set to 750. So that's why the pieces don't just sort of break in place and they burst outwards a little bit. Uh, that ra radial magnitude, the radial vector. Uh, you can also add a directional vector. So if I set that to true here, we get these extra arrows here pointing in the, uh, in the direction of that directional vector. Um, so let's just play that for example and we should be able to see our upwards force being added there. And uh, let's say you didn't want it to uh, burst upwards though, you could rotate this actor. Uh, let's say we want to burst this way, maybe this is an explosion uh, sort of next to the wall here or something. Uh, let's turn up the directional magnitude a bit here as well, maybe 2500 so we can really see this effect. Press play and now it's bursting that way. Uh, and of course you could also set this at runtime. So you would set the directional vector. Let's say you're making this uh, field from a projectile that's been launched or uh, from an impact point. Uh, you would set the directional vector to the impact normal uh, so that it appeared to uh, affect the mesh correctly based on the impact. Um, okay, and then moving on here, use torque. Uh, so this is gonna apply some rotational velocity. Uh, it says here on the tooltip, this helps to create a realistic looking simulation. So depending on the kind of breakage that you're creating or going for, uh, the kind of destruction, uh, you may or may not use torque and you might use a uh, little or a lot and uh, you can adjust all that there. And there's some more settings here as well that you can adjust um, velocity field fall off and uh, min max for that. Uh, noise here, you can set, uh, this is gonna apply some randomness to your fall off field values so that uh, if you're creating these uh, fields from projectiles, for example, it's not going to look exactly the same each time. It's going to introduce a little bit of randomness that way. Uh, internal strain here. So this is if you want to make uh, damage over time or accumulated damage rather than uh, a single breakage or an external strain. Um, and so we'll take a look at that real quick here. What I'll do is uh, just turn off uh, external strain and we're going to also turn off radial vector and directional vector and torque. What I'll do is I'm going to create an effect of uh, let's say uh, some damage over time from some flames. Um, and so when you use decay, uh, the decay amount, uh, if you're activating this field um, on delay, what, even if your delay is zero seconds, it's only gonna apply this decay one time. Um, if you're using on tick, on the other hand, uh, it's gonna apply this decay every tick up to a maximum of this max decay amount. Uh, and so I'm going to use on tick, but I don't want it to tick uh, every frame. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to uh, open up my damage field actor and under actor tick here, I'm going to set the tick interval in seconds to 0.5. So it's just going to tick uh, once per uh, half second, uh, twice per second. So I'll compile and close that and uh, we'll go to the activation type here and set it to on tick. And for the decay amount, um, to figure out how much I want it to decay by, I'm gonna select my cube and go to the damage thresholds here. And we can see the default damage thresholds are 500,000 for the first level, 50,000, and then 5,000. And so uh, let's say in order to create sort of a realistic damage over time here, um, what I'll do is um, select the, the uh, field actor here again, and for decay amount, I'm gonna put in uh, 135,000. And I've picked that number because, I'll uh, we'll just pick up a calculator here. Uh, if we do 135,000 uh, times three ticks, after three ticks, nothing will have happened yet because we've only done 405,000 damage accumulated and it doesn't break the first level till 500,000. Uh, so on the fourth tick, so that'll be after uh, two seconds. Uh, we'll add another 135,000 damage. And now that will break our first level of uh, threshold because it's over 500,000. But the overflow is only 40,000, which is less than our uh, next damage threshold level of 50,000. 
So that won't be broken yet until the next tick. So it'll uh, create a little bit of damage after two seconds and then a bit more damage after another half second uh, to sort of give this damage over time effect. And what I can do as well here, I'm just gonna turn off the uh, debug information. And also I'm gonna open up the actor here and just add a particle system. And I'm gonna add from the starter content here, this uh, P underscore fire. And we'll compile that and close. And so now we've got these flames here coming out of the block. And uh, so let's press play here and take a look at what happens. All right, perfect. So after a couple seconds, it uh, breaks a little bit and then a little bit more. So it's a fairly realistic breakdown of, you know, like if a, say a wood pillar or something like that was on fire and it would uh, break down over time, right? And so that's uh, how to use decay or internal strain to uh, create an accumulated damage uh, on a, a chaos mesh or destructible mesh. All right, and so that basically covers most of what I wanted to discuss in the video. There's a few more advanced field settings here I'm not gonna go into too much detail about, uh, but you can adjust some of these settings based on uh, the effect or the kind of damage that you're going for. Uh, and you can also adjust uh, this name, you know, sort of the debug information that uh, you're seeing here and to show the wireframe or not, or the text or not, and to show uh, the shape or not. All right, and so that's basically it, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.